Hello, welcome. In this video, we want to look at anticoagulants. See, anticoagulants is an important topic for exam. They have asked what you have to name the anticoagulants, mechanism of action, how they work, the uses in lab, uses in blood bank. So you should know all this, guys. <clears throat> so what exactly is an anticoagulant? So you're collecting blood and you don't want the blood to clot, correct? So you use an anticoagulant. So this is an anticoagulant, which is extra uh, not inside the body it's outside the body right that is the anticoagulant they're talking about anticoagulant you can give uh, like uh, heparin can be given in vivo also but we are talking about in vitro in the lab okay that is what we're talking about here so here we are talking about uses in lab okay in vitro we are not talking about uh, the in vivo ones so basically you're collecting blood and you want to store the blood for some purpose their anticoagulants what you use okay so this is a generic definition of anticoagulants like it is a blood thinner it's a chemical substance used to prevent or reduce the coagulation of blood so that uh, you can reduce prevent or reduce the coagulation of blood or you can prolong the clotting time is this clear is it clear or it's just going above your head we are looking at anticoagulants in vitro that means in the lab what we use so anticoagulants, usually they are blood thinners. They are going to prevent or reduce the co um, coagulation of the blood. Okay. And they are going to prolong the clotting time. Main things that you have to remember are EDTA, heparin, sodium, citrate. These three you have to remember. So these are vacutainer colors. So the vacutainer in which they collect blood, right? Those caps, if you have seen, they will be color, color, color caps, right? So there can be so many colors. You have to remember at least three of them. EDTA lavender, lavender color is here, lavender, lavender EDTA, heparin will be green if the vacutainer, it will come with pre-coating of these um, anticoagulants. So if you are using a green capped uh, vacutainer, that means to say it will have heparin and if it is light blue, it will be sodium citrate. Sodium citrate is important for exam guys. Actually all of them, these three you have to know because anticoagulant question itself can come for you. Now, if there is no anticoagulant in the vacutainer, then it will be red colored cap. Okay, red color cap means blood itself. No, nothing other than the blood. So, that will be red. So, basically this you will use to do some endocrine tests, etc. Uh, you can you can draw the serum, right? That time you can, for serum collection. So, red. Okay, no anticoagulants for serum. Then, yellow is also there. Let's not confuse now. Yellow is there, but we will not remember that. Pink. Pink for blood transfusion, cross-matching. Fluoride uh, for estimation of glucose. This will be gray colored. Now, how much went into your head and how much went out of your head? Okay. So, just try to recollect and uh, tell what you have learned so far. Anticoagulants. We learned that uh, uh, the examples are EDTA, lavender, heparin green, sodium citrate blue, light blue. Then we have other colors like red means uh, for serum, there will be no anticoagulant. Then um, pink is for uh, cross matching blood transfusion, gray is for fluoride for estimation of glucose. One more was there, uh, we don't want to remember that, right? This one actually might get too confusing for you. So as of now, leave this, okay? Now moving on, uh, we have to learn about EDTA that is um, the lavender vacutainer, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Say this, EDTA stands for ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Thank you so much. So the color you remember here, lavender, right? Lavender color. Not sure if this is the exact one. This is also called a sequestrin versine. Sequestrin, sequestrin versine. Okay. The actual uh, salt they are using is dipotassium EDTA. It is used in dry form. Okay. So actually they like dry. Um, uh, anticoagulants dry anticoagulants they like because the liquid ones cause dilution okay so dry is good now how much of it uh, do you use 1.5 mg per ml of blood how does it work edta edta will do chelation of calcium so without calcium there can be no blood clot you know that right you remember the coagulation cascade you have the 
intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway, right? So then you have the common pathway. In, see, even here you need calcium. <clears throat> here for factor 10 activation you need calcium. You need calcium for conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. You need calcium again here. So without calcium it is very difficult. Calcium is nothing but uh, factor 4, okay? So 11, 10, 2, all of these need calcium. Factor 11, factor 10, factor 2, all of these need calcium. So without calcium, no blood clot. Now for uh, what do you use this uh, EDTA as anticoagulant for routine hematological investigation? So whenever in physiology lab you are doing all the hemoglobin estimation, the RBC count, the WBC count, the PCV, the uh, peripheral blood smear you are doing, reticulocyte count you are doing, electrophoresis if you are doing, everything EDTA only, okay? Except ESR, right? ESR uh, is not included here. Otherwise, whatever you are doing in physiology lab, everything will be EDTA only. Ethylene, diamine, tetraacetic acid will be given as the anticoagulant. Now, you cannot use it for coagulation test, etc. For uh, And it causes uh, pseudothrombocytopenia. So, don't use it to, uh, for platelet estimation. You cannot use, right? So, can't use for platelet estimation. Okay. So EDTA is done guys. Can you summarize EDTA? EDTA basically is uh, ethylene diamine uh, tetraacetic acid. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, it is also called a sequestrin etc. 1.5 mg per ml. 1.5 is it? 1.5 mg per ml. Yes. So you are using the dipotassium uh, EDTA because it is available dry. So that is good and it is more soluble or something. Yes. Then um, you didn't write that here. Write that here. It is more soluble right? It is more soluble also. Okay. Then how does it, uh, what is the mechanism of action of EDTA? It will um, and chelate calcium. So when no calcium is available, there can be no blood clot. Calcium is required for activation of factor 11, 10 and 2. Prothrombin conversion to thrombin also needs calcium. So um, there will be no blood clot. For what do you use uh, EDTA? Uh, you, you use it for uh, estimation of hemoglobin, uh, for uh, hematocrit, for uh, uh, blood cell count, then you can use it for uh, electrophoresis, sickle, sickling, then you can use it for reticulocyte count, for peripheral blood smear also you can use. You cannot use it for coagulation, for ESR etc. you cannot use. Uh, as it causes pseudothrombocytopenia, you cannot use it for placement estimation I guess. Very very good. So now let us move on, EDTA is done, what is the next one we want to study? Heparin. Let's move on quickly to heparin. Heparin is, um, you already know about heparin, right? In pharmacology, you have studied about heparin. But here we are using, you are looking at the in vitro application of heparin, not the low molecular weight heparin which is used in uh, in vivo, not that one which is used for giving to human beings, not that one. We are talking about the in vitro one. Here, you are using the salts of heparin, okay? It prevents, how does it work? It... Um, enhances the activity of antithrombin 3. So it enhances the activity of antithrombin 3. This antithrombin 3 was actually inhibiting thrombin. So now you have more antithrombin, it will inhibit thrombin. So thrombin gets inhibited a lot. So there will be inhibition of thrombin. Enhancing the antithrombin, wait, this much is in here enough. You are enhancing the activity of antithrombin 3, right? So obviously antithrombin means no coagulation, correct? Antithrombin 3. So it does not alter size of cells, which is very good. So you can use it to check the fragility, osmotic fragility of these cells. Immunophenotyping, etc. Okay. Somewhere it was written LFT, I'm not sure. The disadvantages of heparin, it causes leukocyte clumping. So it clumps the leukocyte. Heparin will impart a blue background to the smear. Though heparin vacutainer is uh, marked in green color, it imparts a blue background to the smear. So you cannot use it for peripheral smearing. You cannot use it for leukocyte uh, counting. That is TLC you cannot use because it uh, causes leukocyte clumping. Okay. And it is also expensive. Heparin is expensive. Okay. Summarize heparin now. 
हेपैरिन बेसिकली वी आर यूजिंग एज सोडियम और अमोनियम सॉल्ट ऑफ हेपैरिन वी आर यूजिंग एज एन एंटी क्वाइटलेंट इन विट्रो वी कैन यूज इन वीवो ऑल्सो बट हियर वी आर टॉकिंग ओनली अबाउट इन विट्रो हेपैरिन बेसिकली वॉट द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन इज इट इनहिबिट्स सॉरी इट इनहेंस द एक्टिविटी ऑफ एंटी थ्रोम्बिन थ्री सो बेसिकली वॉट हैपन्स इज द थ्रोम्बिन इज इनहिबिटेड सो देर विल बी लो ब्लड कोआगुलेशन where in all you use uh, heparin because it does not alter the size of cells you can use it to check the osmo uh, osmotic fragility you can use it for immunophenotyping this will be difficult to remember i think immunophenotyping and then uh, disadvantage of heparin is that you cannot use it for tlc uh, leukocyte count leukocyte counting because it causes clumping of leukocytes also you cannot use it for peripheral smear because it imparts a blue background to the peripheral smear so guys heparin we have not used in the lab remember we have not done osmotic fragility we have not done immunophenotyping so definitely heparin we have not used we have used only edta that is the lavender vacutane has been given to you now moving on to sodium citrate sodium citrate will be blue vacutane basically for esr by westergren's method they will use westergren actually it is westergren westergren method Write the spelling correctly. Westergren by Westergren method ESR, you will use uh, sodium citrate, okay? Because um, it is liquid anticoagulant. This is a disadvantage they are saying. It's a liquid anticoagulant. It will cause dilution. So don't don't use it for blood clot. But for ESR by Westergren method, not by the Wintrop method. By Westergren method, they they will use sodium citrate. Actually, sodium citrate they have asked many times in the exam. It is actually tri sodium citrate. Three point two percent is used. 3.2 percent is used, okay, and you have to measure coagulation within two hours, ESR within four hours. So you can measure it. You can measure coagulation also. <clears throat> is that clear? So sodium citrate also we have covered in this video. Sodium citrate they have asked in the exam. So let's just recap what we have studied so far in anticoagulants. Uh, uh, this video. So basically, we have uh, looked at the different. What is anticoagulant? We looked at the definition, correct? We looked at the definition of anticoagulant. We looked at the examples of anticoagulant. Here we are focusing on EDTA, heparin, sodium citrate. The one we have always used in our lab is EDTA. Okay, EDTA, lavender in physiology lab. That is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. how it will work is chelation of calcium you should know the mechanism of action all the routine things uh, hematological investigations we have used is edta only so edta only we have used everywhere hemoglobin by sahlis and all that then cell count also you have done there also you used edta peripheral blood smear you have done that also edta okay then um, what are the disadvantages pseudo thrombocytopenia okay heparin basically we have not used it is actually used to check osmotic fragility immunophenotyping actually it in, it enhances the activity of antithrombin 3 it is expensive also we have not used heparin anyways sodium citrate uh, it is used for uh, esr by westergren method 3.2% sodium citrate you can measure you can check coagulation and esr also you can check but it is a liquid anticoagulant remember and hence it causes dilution you cannot use it for counting the blood blood cells so that's all for now in uh, <clears throat> anticoagulants